Welcome back, DJ Vic Vapor with you. And we're going through the Bitwig Intermediate course. I believe we're on lesson 10, but don't quote me if the title says something different. I've been trying to keep track as we go, but we're talking a little bit about loops. We've got a little groove we've worked on here over the last few lessons. And Again, when talking about loops, in the previous lesson, we looked at a couple different ways to kind of take control of it and make it our own. But let's look at a few more options and, and different ways to work with loops. I think this is important for us to really focus on in a couple lessons. Simply as the course goes forward and as I move into the more advanced sections of Bitwig, which we intend to do, I think this will probably be the last lesson for the intermediate side of stuff. And from here on out, we'll be dealing with mostly advanced stuff. I just feel like the way I work and the way I produce and, and the way I use Bitwig a lot is primarily taking control of loops. So let's look at uh, another option for uh, handling loops. And one of the things we can do here is we can right click, slice to drum machine. And now we're going to have a menu come up with a few options for us. Bounce and slice, slice raw, pre-effects, pre-fader, post-fader, or custom. So all these choices are extremely important. Pre-effects, of course, the slices will rep be represented without any effects that you've processed on the loop. Pre-fader, of course, before anything was processed on the loop. Post fader is going to give you all the elements, all the effects, everything that you may have or have not uh, put onto that loop channel as a part of the sound, the process. And then you're going to have, you can limit the number of slices or you can have 127. I think that's 127 slices for most loops is more than enough choices. Oftentimes I find myself actually going a lot less than that. So this will actually create eight slices. So let's go ahead and slice to drum machine. And immediately uh, and quickly, it becomes its own channel. Let's solo it. And it's exactly the same sound, maybe a little softer on volume. Turn it up. But now we've got all eight individual sounds being processed through the sampler. Let me move uh, real estate here. individually. And we can go in and say in effect one of the ways we can now that we've taken advantage of bouncing it over like this is we can affect individual slices through the sampler itself just by changing some parameters here we can actually have these modulated so let's say we want to take the LFO over it over the sample start of this guy and move this up. That's going to give oh, it's a little hot. Let's bring it back. And let's also change, slow that down a little bit. Let's also take LFO 2 and just move the start, the loop start with the sample start, kind of back and forth off of each other there. Let's give that guy a little bit more speed, phase it a little bit. And that's all just one sample I've manipulated, one tiny sample of the loop that we bounced over. Other options here, of course, is now that it's a MIDI file, we can actually go in and modify the MIDI elements. So let's change these up a little bit here. So there we can mangle it up in a MIDI file, or we can, now we can always go back now that we've got some changes in the MIDI there, and again I can begin to, uh, you know, modulate whatever I like for each sample. You can get really, really creative. You can spend 
hours in the studio just kind of making your own custom rack or custom sound this way. But one of the benefits here as we've explored these little options is now we can take this individual file, right click it again, and say bounce. And it's going to ask us again, pre-FX, pre-fader, post-fader. Post-fader we're going to stay with, OK. Now, solo down here, we've got an audio file of the exact mangled MIDI that we were just working with. I mean, this can go on and on. We can actually, you know, if you wanted to get creative, and sometimes that's what I do in the studio, is just kind of find ways to just get creative as possible. We could take this guy, double click. We can say, slice the new drum machine. OK. Solo. Here's the newest portion of the file. Let's get rid of this guy. And MIDI again, but this is, you know, far repeated from the original loop and the original source that we were working with. So let's go in here and do something with this. Let's give it a little more volume. And we'll open up, say, this sample right here. Let's uh, give it a little modulation. Let's see what we can do with this guy. And I'm just, <laughs> no rhyme or reason, I'm just kind of showing you the possibilities here. Just grabbing and doing whatever I want to do here. And hopefully you kind of get the idea of just how creative and uh, how quickly you can just keep bouncing and manipulating and bouncing and manipulating. So I'm going to mute the original source and the other two examples. And this is our third example, but let's just see what it sounds like in the project. I'm not shooting for anything spectacular here. I'm just curious to see how it sits in the project. So. Like I said, nothing too great. Again, the purpose of this really wasn't to uh, develop a, a really good project. It was more or less to show you the features. So hopefully you've enjoyed the uh, intermediate course, Bitwig Studios. Just, uh, I believe, like I said, uh, 10 short lessons. And then moving forward from here, we're just going to go into, uh, you know, producing tracks. And hopefully uh, that you've learned enough through the beginner's course and the intermediate course that as we're into the more advanced stuff um, and you notice what I'm doing, it doesn't look so alien to you that you've got some sort of comfort level developed with Bitwig Studios. But I want to say thanks for, you know, following through the course. Thanks for the support. And uh, hopefully I've been able to teach you something new about Bitwig. And I'll see you in the more advanced sessions.